Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask for a full run of this. So here it is with the running commentary. I've already got a pretty in-depth video guide explaining how to do this using the company time dice on my channel, which I will link down below. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here in regards to the strategy itself or the loadout. So, so if you're interested in that, you should check out that video instead. So the difference here with this particular run, however, is that we're not going for maximum damage, but rather maximum shields. So this is gonna be the full run where we landed the 241 million shields using Japan in March. So what this means is that instead of running this with the data inflation dice, like I show you in my guide video, we're instead gonna be running this with the company time time dice. So the reason for this is that we want to use the company time passive to build shield strength bonus by spending hundreds of millions of fragments. The implication here is that because we no longer run the daily inflation dice, we will no longer get all the free cheats and the free rerolls that we normally would. So this makes what was already an insanely RNG run even more difficult to pull off. So we are truly at the mercy of RNG here. So the video itself is gonna start in plane two as I didn't record plane one due to the fact that we needed like 100 resets in order to get our opener. Essentially what needs to happen is that we first need to set up the IPC banking part one by depositing some fragments. We then need to quit that run and then start a new run in order to look for the IPC banking event again for part two. Now, if you run into part two while having a positive intracognition, you'll then be presented with this Eurydition option in order to receive a gold coin of discord and a genius society gossip curio. And so that's the first part done. Once we land that, we then need to progress through plane one to reach the first boss. All the while, we wanna be collecting as many fragments as we can while actively avoiding any curios. The goal here is to beat the plain one boss and gain the silver coin of discord from it. Now, the reason why this run is so brutal is that if you don't get the silver coin of discord here, you're gonna to need to reset your run. Not only that, you're also gonna to need to reset up the IPC banking part one again before attempting it. Okay, so let's jump into the actual run here. We've just killed the plain one boss and he's given us our silver coin. So we've been really lucky so far and we haven't picked up any other curios yet. So the only curios we have on us right now is the silver coin of discord, the gold coin of discord and the genius society gossip curio. This means that every time we now roll the reforged die face, we're always gonna have the same three curios appear, which always lets us discard the silver coin every single time to increase our fragments exponentially. So as we enter plane two, the first face that we want to roll is going to be the general diffusion die face. This generates three random beacons onto the field and we don't really care about the beacons too much. It can be nice if you get a double reward or something like that. But the real reason that we want to do this is because we want to remove this face from the pool. Once you roll diffusion once, it can no longer appear naturally on rolls, which means that instead of a one in six chance of rolling a reforge face, we're now playing with a one in five odds. Now, what I didn't mention before is that we're not just looking to maximize our fragments this run, we also need some key blessings. Now, unlike capping out damage where you can simply depend on your fragments to interact with the Robo Beauty, Cavity System Curio, or Investment Die Face, in order to maximize our shields, we need blessings to generate more stackable shields and to increase our shield strength. The most important blessing to pull this off is going to be macro segregation, which essentially just doubles the amount of shields that we generate. So we get pretty lucky here, as you can see, getting a reforged die naturally without needing to spend any cheats or rerolls. You can also see that we've got one cheat and eight rerolls here, which we managed to pick up in plane one by entering intracognition domains. Intracognition domains are gonna be really valuable on this run as they're gonna be the main way that we're gonna be getting our cheats and rerolls. We also wanna be targeting transaction domains in order to look for blessings to give us more shields and also Eurydition blessings to give us brain and vat so that we can cast Japard's ultimate back to back. Another good way to get macro segregation is going to be inside reward domains as these have a few occurrences that can reward you with three star blessings. But as always, we wanna avoid anything that will give us curios. So here we get an inspiration face, which we'll use to duplicate an intracognition domain so that we can continue to build up our cheats. On this run here, you might notice that we do pick up a few DPS blessings too. I wouldn't recommend this if you're just focusing on maximizing shields, but we were greedy and what we wanted to do was cap out our damage using the path resonance alongside maximizing our shields. So once again, we got really lucky with our rerolls and we landed another reforge with just one reroll. It's actually very common to simply tank a run because you get unlucky and you just can't roll your reforges. Thankfully, that's not the case here. Now, you might've noticed just now that we opted to go down to the elite instead of up towards the abnormal occurrence. And there's a really good reason for this. During plane two, under no circumstances do you ever wanna step onto an abnormal occurrence. So the reason for this is because they have the chance to spawn an IPC investment occurrence. We wanna save this occurrence for plane three once we've got enough fragments built up as this is what we're gonna be using to not only double and triple our fragments, but also to spend all of our fragments. 
Without this, there's really no way to spend all of our fragments as even buying and upgrading every single blessing in the game won't even come close to this. There is however one other method that the game does consider as spending that you can use to spend millions of fragments and that is picking up the cavity system curio. Now, theoretically, the best possible outcome for maximizing your spendings is to actually win both investment rounds of the IPC investment and then find a Knight of Beauty Occurrence to pick up a tooth in order to spend your winnings. Theoretically, if you had 10 million fragments when entering an IPC investment, you would walk out with 100 million fragments with a total spending of 30 million. If you can then find yourself a Knight of Beauty Occurrence to get yourself a tooth, you can then take the total spendings to 130 million. This would net you over 10 million percent shield bonus. Okay, so let's check back in on our run. In this transaction domain, we got pretty lucky and we nabbed ourselves a blessing to increase our shield strength by another 30%, along with a Eurydition blessing to charge brain in a bat. So we're doing this on difficulty one, so the enemies are really easy. So it's quite easy for us to save up our brain in a bat charge for the final encounter. We're also not running a healer and have purposely dropped our health down as low as possible in order to proc more bonus shields from blessings. We're going to be fine as we start every fight with shields and against difficulty 1 enemies there's really no risk of dying. Here we toss out a few rerolls to try to fish for another reforge, unfortunately we do get unlucky so we have to spend our cheat to get it. This now leaves us with 0 cheat and 4 rerolls. And here once again more transaction domains in order to hunt for macro segregation but we're actually getting really unlucky and it's just not showing up. We do however pick up a resonance interplay here with destruction which is a crucial bonus to get. It's also part of the reason why we're keeping our health under 50% as this increases the shield duration by 2 turns for characters who are under 50% health which is pretty massive as it gives us more turns to stack shields. And here again we're unlucky with rolls as we get a counteract into an investment and then back into a counteract again. That's two rerolls wasted for no gain. So we take the L and we use the counteract to duplicate an intracognition domain. Here we take a little bit of a risk and we hop into a double occurrence. There's always a chance here that we run into something that forces a courier onto us which would be really really bad. But thankfully we get a courier hacker and a cheating code which both have options allowing us to pass on the couriers. Finally, however, our luck does change and we get a naturally rolled reforge. We've only got two rerolls left, so any natural reforges are going to be very welcomed. With this reforge, we now duplicate our 230,000 fragments, and we're now sitting on a total of 460,000 fragments. Almost half a million, not too bad. Now, we do pick up a cheat in that last intracognition domain, but now we spend a roll to get a counteract. With only one cheat in our pocket, we really didn't want to use it here, as it was going to be crucial for us to get the right opener in plane 3, so we can't really afford to spend it now, so we simply accept the counteract and use it to duplicate a transaction domain in hopes of finding macro segregation. There's only a few domains left in plane 2, and we still don't have that blessing yet, so it's starting to get a little scary. So, no macro segregation here either, so we have one more transaction domain in plane 2, and then it's on to the boss. Luckily for us, we do get another natural reforge, which brings up our total fragments to 1 million. And then what do you know, no macro segregation here either. So instead we just pick up a couple more preservation blessings in order to pick up some more resonance formations. Ideally here we would be picking up eutectic reaction for our resonance formation as this does increase shields that we get, but we did get a little bit greedy and decided on some more DPS formations so that we could get bigger damage numbers. If you're not going for damage however, then eutectic is the way to go. And here this is where we make a crucial mistake in the Curio store. We saw the cheat rope and decided to pick it up. Now we can either spend one roll to discard the Curio, but then that's one entire roll wasted that could have been a reforge, which at this point in time is worth 1 million fragments. So instead we decided to just roll reforges with 4 Curios. If you're super lucky, that's not going to be so bad. You've got a 3 in 4 chance for the silver coin to still show up in reforges, so statistically it's going to be fine. But I guess you can guess by my tone what's about to happen to us. <laughs> this rope bites us in the butt. So the plane 2 boss is here and we beat Japard with ease. And then we realise you're forced to pick up a courier from the plane 2 boss. So now we're not just running 4 couriers, we're running 5. And at this point in the run it's already too late to be discarding couriers. So we opt to pick the Aeron pouch in hopes of getting a macro segregation, but once again no dice. 
So in the transaction domain, we pick up a few more blessings, but unfortunately still no macro segregation. We do however get lucky on our reroll and we do get a reforge on the first one, but here we go, our worst nightmare. No silver coin amongst the selection. So we pick the next best thing and reobtain the Aeron pouch for a chance of macro segregation. But I'm sure you're familiar with the narrative by now and nothing. So here we make another pretty big mistake. The right play here would have been to go down south into the reward domain as these have a very high chance to contain occurrences such as the Knight of Beauty, Caustic Beauty Bug, Universal Dancer and Cosmic Altruist which all have a guaranteed 3 star blessing option. Instead we went up to the adventure domain and unfortunately we didn't get anything useful from it. Now at this point in time we needed to roll an inspiration to duplicate abnormal occurrences. After all this RNG there's still 2 more layers of RNG. We need to land an IPC investment and then we need to win the first investment stage. We have a cheat saved up to make sure that we could roll inspiration but thankfully it appeared naturally for us. So the first abnormal occurrence we enter was just a societal dreamscape. Just 2 more chances to go. We've got one cheat left so we use it on one more reforge. We're currently sitting on 4 million fragments so this would take us to 8 million. Now remember when I said that the rope courier was the biggest mistake that we made on this run? <laughs> yeah, this is why you don't buy couriers. And so we curse the universe even though it was our very own fault and we power on. Thankfully this time around we got the IPC investment occurrence. So with this occurrence, the very first option is always a guaranteed win, but it's for a negligible 200 fragments, or 400 in our case. Our next round has us spend 50%, which in our case is 2.3 million fragments, for a 50% chance of winning 9 million fragments back thanks to the Gossip Curio. If we failed here, we would just be walking to the boss with a 2.3 million fragment worth of spendings, which is a lot, but definitely not enough to pull off anything impressive. Luckily for us though, we did win it, bringing our total fragments up to 11 million. Now, for the next stage, there is only a 25% chance of winning, however it doesn't really matter. We only care about fragments spent, so whether or not we win or lose, we still get credit for 11 million fragments worth of spending. That said though, we did win, so that's a cool 45 million fragments in our pocket. So we managed to pull off a little over 13 million fragments worth of spending, netting ourselves over 800,000% shield bonus. This could have been so much higher had we not made that mistake with the couriers, but what can you do? We've got one reroll left and one domain to go. At this point it doesn't really matter since we've already finished spending, and we're just a little sad that we're going to have to be doing this without macro segregation. But wait, what do we have here? Obtain a 3 star blessing and all characters lose 80% health? And there it is! This damn blessing is so bloody dramatic, it just had to show up right before the very end. Whatever, it's here now and so that's instantly double shields, amazing. So we've got our 800,000 shield bonus, along with our core blessings. The run could have definitely been much better, however we'll be back to try again next time anyway. If we had gotten a little bit luckier with our rolls, I could definitely see us landing well over 50 million fragments worth of spending, which would have easily pushed us into the billions for shields. We roll our last die, and just as a final kick in the pants, it gives us an investment face. Midway through this run, we decided that investment was definitely a no-go this run, due to the fact that we would be running March 7. So this presents an issue, because we're now rocking over 50 million fragments, which means that March is counter-attacking for hundreds of millions of damage, and causing the boss to get one shot. This severely limits the amount of turns that we have to set up our shields, but as usual, we just power through as there's nothing to be really done about it. We're just going to need to reset the game if we get unlucky with counters and the boss is about to die. So here's a quick look at all the blessings that we picked up along the way. We're definitely missing a couple of shield blessings, but we did manage to get most of the good ones, so it's not too bad. So we pop our Japard technique before the fight starts and we get our opening shields. 57 million shields for simply existing. <laughs> Insane. What I didn't show here though was that we had to reset the fight a few times because March kept on one-shotting the boss. This is why Japard unfortunately doesn't have brain in a vat charge, which severely reduces the amount of shields that he's able to cast. We pop Jupard's ultimate and throw out a Ting Yun ult to give him back energy. Our goal now is to land at least 2 ultimates with Jupard. We then use March's skill to apply 28 million shields, followed by a Bronya action advance to allow her to cast another 28 million. Bear in mind though that all these shields are being affected by macro segregation, so everything is actually being doubled on the back end. Luckily for us, Jupard does get hit, which gives him just enough energy back to cast another second ultimate. 
and as such netting us our 240 million shields. This unfortunately was a pretty scuffed run. If we hadn't run into the issue with March 7 one-shotting the boss, we would have gone into this fight with Brain and Avat on both Japart and Ting Yun, which would have given us two more ultimates on Japart. This could have easily been a 1 billion shield showcase if not for that. But hopefully this run has helped you wrap your head around what it takes to break the shield records. We're going to keep on trying and we'll definitely be back with a billion shield showcase in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I'll have at the end here a showcase of the Japart that we use for the run if you're interested. And if you found this run interesting or you've got any questions about the run, let me know down in the comments. See ya!